So here we are, uh, I would say a new topic, uh, maybe totally new topic, uh, and also a topic uh, which is not very widespread uh, still in social sciences. Uh, maybe the reason uh, why latent class analysis is still not something like standard in social science data analysis is uh, that still uh, classical platforms uh, uh, for uh, uh, statistical computing uh, such as uh, SPSS, SAS, Stata, Statistica, etc. Uh, do not usually offer latent class analysis, at least do not offer latent class analysis uh, in their uh, standard uh, versions. Uh, as you will recognize at the end of today's lectures, uh, there are also options, uh, for example, to compute latent class analysis in SPSS, uh, but still uh, it's not classical standard in uh, basic versions. So uh, that's why maybe a latent class analysis is not so widespread. Uh, and also maybe the second reason uh, could be uh, behind. Uh, there is also a quite limited number of sources uh, related uh, to latent class analysis. So if you, for example, read classical uh, statistical textbooks, uh, uh, which usually uh, use names such as uh, multivariate uh, uh, statistical analysis or social science data analysis, so latent class is usually not covered uh, in these texts. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, of course, maybe a pity. Uh, and maybe the reason why it's a pity is uh, that uh, latent class analysis is the technique uh, that was originated in sociology. Uh, one of founding fathers of latent class analysis uh, uh, was uh, Paul Felix Lazarsfeld, uh, as you will recognize uh, later. So uh, let's go down to the literature sources. Uh, so if you would like to read uh, some basic uh, and maybe also uh, advanced information, uh, so you could find these texts. So first of all, uh, I would like to recommend you still, uh, in spite of the fact that it is quite old source, uh, uh, the book uh, written by McCutcheon, published in 1987. Uh, and this uh, quite small text, approximately 80 pages, uh, gave uh, very precise and uh, detailed information about basics in latent class analysis. So uh, you can find this source uh, uh, in student information system. So uh, that's the file if I go back, uh, which is called here uh, as uh, uh, LCA text. So this lecture 12 LCA text uh, PDF, uh, that's the data file. Uh, that's a text uh, file, uh, which is uh, uh, McCutcheon uh, textbook. So I will only uh, close uh, uh, this window uh, as we don't need it uh, for uh, next time. Uh, next source is uh, Hagenars and McCutcheon edited book uh, called Applied Latent Class Analysis uh, published in Cambridge University Press. Uh, so if you would like to be experts uh, in the field of uh, latent class analysis, uh, this is the best book uh, you should have. And if you would like to find the source, which was also published uh, in Czech environment, but uh, be careful, not in Czech language. Uh, so you can find the chapter uh, from Julia Hauber, uh, which was called Latent Class Analysis uh, in book, which was published uh, uh, and edited uh, by Irabek and Sokup uh, in uh, publishing house Carolina. So uh, these are uh, possible sources. And now uh, we would briefly go into historical excursus. Uh, so I would like to give you uh, some insight into the history of latent class analysis. So before we start maybe to discuss about historical excursus, uh, I would start with uh, some question uh, to all of you. And my question is, uh, if I uh, go to factor analysis. Uh, uh, let's start maybe with exploratory factor analysis. Uh, I would like to know which variables I should have to perform properly exploratory factor analysis. So for which variables uh, exploratory factor analysis is prepared uh, to work with? Cardinal, ordinal or nominal? What are the best? Yeah, so factor analysis is mainly for cardinal variables. 
And now maybe second question, much easier than previous one. So I hope that everybody could respond. Uh, so if you go to classical uh, social science questionnaires, uh, so uh, if you take uh, typical questions uh, in these social science questionnaires, so what is uh, usually property of for these variables that are based on these questionnaires? Are they mainly nominal, ordinal or cardinal? Definitely mainly ordinal. Yeah, maybe ordinal and sometimes also nominal, uh, maybe sometimes only binary variables. So uh, if we discuss about factor analysis, uh, so uh, we may be due to fact uh, we have just covered, uh, know that in social sciences, there is nearly no space for classical factor analysis. But still, we would like maybe to inquire some hidden dimensions behind my data, uh, if they are nominal or if they are ordinal. And uh, this reason that uh, data for social sciences are not usually cardinal, uh, but we would like also to discover hidden dimensions behind data was maybe the main reason why latent class analysis or previous technique as we will discuss about so-called latent structure analysis was developed. Only uh, if I mention uh, some dates, uh, so factor analysis uh, uh, was established at the beginning of uh, 20th century uh, and uh, for establishing of latent class analysis or uh, latent structure analysis, uh, social scientists uh, should wait uh, approximately 50 more years. So we are somewhere at the end of 60s, uh, that's only uh, for you to know. So here we have uh, some uh, basic notes uh, from this historical excursus. So the basic idea was first published by Paul Felix Lazarsfeld in 50s uh, and a well-known book uh, devoted to latent structure analysis, uh, uh, which was published by Lazarsfeld and Henry, uh, was published in 1968, if I remember well. And uh, once again, uh, the basic uh, goal was to prepare the technique that could find some hidden dimensions behind data that are nominal or ordinal. And the basic idea of uh, Paul Felix Lazarsfeld and his cooperators uh, was that usually if we observe people's behavior or people attitudes, uh, so these phenomenon are influenced by some hidden structures that are somewhere behind uh, answering of questions and these hidden structures could be measured indirectly. So once again, the same principle as for exploratory or confirmatory factor analysis, only in the realm of nominal and ordinal variables. And Lazarsfeld coined this technique uh, by the name latent structure analysis or LSA. The only limit for this latent structure analysis was that it was designed only for binary variables. But maybe as you can recognize, uh, if you have uh, some ordinal uh, data or nominal data with more than two categories, this is every time at least possible, of course, maybe uh, that uh, there is some reduction of information, but it is still usually possible uh, to change uh, coding into two possible codes, it means recode into some binary variable. So also this original version of latent structure analysis could be applied uh, to uh, nominal or ordinal data with some possible reduction of information. But uh, this LCA uh, once again started in 50s and published uh, definitely in uh, 60s uh, was uh, developed uh, in uh, more advanced technique, uh, which is called latent class analysis. Uh, here you have uh, three names uh, of uh, uh, famous statisticians uh, that are uh, main founding fathers of latent class analysis. Theo Goodman, Haberman and Clock. Uh, so these are three uh, names. Uh, and uh, the advance uh, of LCA in comparison with uh, LCA is that you can apply this technique also to variables 
that have more than two categories. Of course, that you can also apply LCA for only two categories. Uh, and uh, for simplicity today, during the lecture, as it is only introduction to LCA, we would be using only two categories for our variables. So technically, uh, we would be performing Clayton structure analysis. So uh, let's go uh, to uh, some deeper insight. Uh, first of all, we would start with some equations, uh, but uh, do not afraid of it. Uh, and then uh, we would take two examples uh, that could help you to understand what is behind the scene. And then of course, uh, we would be computing real life example step by step. Uh, so you would be, I hope so, capable to understand all the complexity of latent class analysis. So first of all, the basic goal of LCA is to find some number, usually it is called as uh, C latent classes for two or more categorical variables. If I mention categorical variables, it means nominal and ordinal variables. So if I uh, once again go to the example of exploratory factor analysis, so ideally, my manifest variables should be cardinal as we discussed previously. And my question is, what should be uh, the factor behind factor analysis? Uh, is it cardinal, ordinal or nominal variable factor which is behind my variables? What is the expectation about factor in factor analysis? What is the property for factor? Can somebody help me? Ordinal. Ordinal is uh, first tip. Some other possible options? Nominal. Sorry? Nominal. Nominal. Okay. And some other options? Only the last one is missing. It could be cardinal. And now, what is the true? Is it nominal, ordinal, and cardinal? And why is it so? So you are trying to measure indirectly some phenomenon behind and you are measuring uh, all these phenomena uh, uh, by set of cardinal variables. So what could be really the property of the variable which is behind nominal, ordinal, cardinal? Once again, let's try. So the source are a set of cardinal variables. So what could be the result? Nobody knows. Cardinal. Ordinal? No, no. Cardinal. So, cardinal. Yeah, cardinal. Yeah. Uh, so if it is set of cardinal variables, uh, so also uh, the result uh, should be cardinal. So the idea behind factor analysis uh, doesn't matter whether we are discussing exploratory or confirmatory version is that from the set of manifest cardinal variables i would get uh, also one cardinal variable which is behind so uh, ideally uh, the factor behind should be the variable from minus infinity till plus infinity uh, so uh, that's the idea of factor analysis. And if we go back uh, into latent class analysis, so absurd variables once again are categorical, nominal or ordinal. And latent classes behind uh, is the variable uh, that distinguishing individuals into different so-called latent classes. So it means the final variable behind the scene is nominal. So it could have two, three, four, five categories. And uh, these categories are only different. I cannot make any ranking. I cannot uh, perform any subtracting uh, uh, division, etc. So from the set of categorical variables, I am trying to find some latent variable and this latent variable is nominal with two or more categories. So that's the statistical uh, basic uh, for latent class analysis. And here we have 
uh, on this slide, number five, basic equation uh, for latent class analysis. So the basic idea is uh, flowing. If I'm trying to prepare uh, equation for P is uh, here for probability. So here we have uh, individual probabilities. So it is probability that I would respond to the first question called A by the option of I. So I would give some answer for A, which is called I answer. And for B question, I would be responding as J. And this X symbol says that I am also the member of some latent class and uh, variable for this latent class is called X uh, on this equation. So two uh, <coughs> probability of answer uh, uh, for item A by I, uh, for item B by J uh, is equal to sum of probability that I am member of individual classes. So these are uh, probabilities of membership for individual classes. Uh, we would call these probabilities as unconditional probabilities, and it would be one of outputs uh, uh, from latent class analysis. Uh, these unconditional probabilities would give up information about uh, the size of latent class. So it means uh, uh, these probabilities uh, would be from zero up to one and would inform us about the size of individual classes. So you must take these unconditional probabilities, these class sizes, let's call it like this, and then two conditional probabilities. This is conditional probability that I would respond to the item A, so it means the first question uh, by Y, and I am from some latent classes, and the second conditional probability that I respond to the item B uh, by possibility J if I am from T latent classes. So if I compute all these together and sum up for all latent classes, I would get these uh, called joint probabilities. So that's the basic equation. And these three parts here, uh, if I have only uh, two items, two questions, uh, uh, will be estimated parameters. So I would need sizes of individual classes and I would need response patterns for individual classes. I would call once again these probabilities as conditional, as this is the probability that I would respond by some style if I am a member of some latent class. So these are conditional probabilities, and this is unconditional probability, once again, size of latent classes, and these conditional probabilities would help me to interpret uh, results. Uh, uh, we would uh, take uh, some uh, motivation example in a few minutes, uh, so you would be able, I hope so, to understand uh, these probabilities uh, maybe uh, in more detail. So once again, here we have uh, in detail description that uh, these probabilities are parameters that are estimated by software. So uh, for our case, uh, we would be using M plus for estimation of these parameters. And by this first parameters, we would recognize what are sizes of individual latent classes and by these conditional probabilities, we would be able to recognize uh, what could be uh, the meaning for individual latent classes. Uh, so uh, this is how it works, uh, at least uh, uh, from the first inside. And now uh, we could go uh, to a very uh, easy uh, motivational example. Uh, so to understand statistically, uh, how it works, uh, of course, uh, we wouldn't be performing uh, many repeated steps uh, called iterations, uh, but I would give you brief insight behind the scene by very simple example uh, in Microsoft Excel environment. So here we have Microsoft Excel file, uh, which is called uh, uh, motivation LCA. So maybe I would make uh, this picture bigger. And here we have, for simplicity, two rows and uh, two columns. 
So here we have maybe one question and here we have maybe the second question such as yes, no, yes, no. And if you take these data, so these are joint uh, uh, <coughs> uh, observed uh, counts uh, for contingency table. Here we have uh, some uh, uh, of uh, individual columns, some of individual rows, and here we have number of respondents. So if I would take this contingency table and I would like to find whether there is some relationship uh, for row and column variable, can you help me to uh, repeat uh, which statistical test I should perform for this contingency table to recognize whether there is some relationship? Chi-square? Yeah, chi-square test of independence should be performed here. Thanks a lot. And that's what is implemented here. So here uh, I am uh, computing uh, 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 only uh, so-called uh, expected frequencies. So I'm multiplying uh, this uh, uh, sum of uh, the first column, this sum of the first row, and dividing uh, by uh, the total amount of respondents. The same pattern is applied to all of these. So I have here observed frequencies, and here I have uh, uh, so-called expected frequencies. And here uh, I have applied the function in Microsoft Excel environment, which is called chi uh, test. So it means chi square test. And here I have p value. Uh, maybe that somebody can help me if I can see p value such as 2.19 uh, multiplied by 10, and the power is minus 18. Uh, so, what would be my conclusion about relationship for uh, this row and column variable? Are these related or not? There is no association at all. No association? Uh, we, we accept a null hypothesis if I'm not... Uh, oh, sorry, so uh, the other way around, there is association because it's less than 0 0.05. Yeah, it is very, very low value. So that's why uh, here I concluded that these variables are dependent. So I would like to say uh, that uh, we can link this example to latent class analysis. So first of all, if I would like to apply latent class analysis, and usually we are not using only two variables, uh, we are using something like uh, five, six, uh, and maybe 20 variables, and we are trying to find some hidden dimension behind. Uh, so my first question is, are these variables related, but not only two, but maybe three, four, five, six, etc. And if I uh, respond, yes, these variables are related somehow, uh, I can, uh, I would say, uh, continue in uh, latent class analysis. If at the beginning I would recognize that my variables are totally unrelated, latent class analysis wouldn't help me to find any latent classes behind. So that's the first information. And if they are related, such as we have here, so the main goal of latent classes is that uh, latent class analysis should somehow divide my data into some groups. These groups are called latent classes. That's why it is called uh, latent class analysis. And ideally, in these individual latent classes, in these groups, these two variables, I mean this row and column variable, should be independent or at least independent. So that's a statistical motivation how we are performing latent class analysis. Uh, if I go back uh, to our previous equation, so this independence is based on this multiplication of these uh, conditional probabilities. There is nothing more such as, for example, interaction of a responding style for first and second item. So that's why uh, we are trying to find latent classes in which these two variables are unrelated and I can directly multiply uh, these conditional probabilities. So uh, that's a statistic uh, uh, computation which is behind. And now, as you can see, we are here starting by column J. So maybe there are some more columns. So now I would uh, open the picture uh, which is behind the scene here. So I would uh, uh, 
discover uh, two latent classes that are uh, behind the scene. So here we have, and you can see that originally, I have the picture of two related variables. P value is very, very low one and uh, related variables. And if I uh, perform uh, here uh, something like latent class analysis, I can discover first group and second group. And if I am computing chi-square test, once again, here and here, P value is one and one. So totally independent variables for group A and totally independent variables for group B. First of all, my question could be, what are the sizes of these group A and group B? So in total, we had 189 respondents. And you can see that here we have two groups. First one is bigger and second one is small, approximately 60% uh, percent here and 40% percent here. So these are group sizes here. So one is bigger and one is small. Once again, if we would be computing uh, these sizes, we would be interested especially in these probabilities that are unconditional probabilities, uh, uh, latent class sizes. So these sizes here would be approximately 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. Precise computation would be 121 divided by 198, uh, 77 uh, by 198. Uh, so you can compute it uh, alone. So that's the first uh, probabilities that are unconditional or sizes of the groups. And here, once again, as we discovered two groups that have totally unrelated variable for row and column, so now it would be nice to somehow describe response patterns. So if I go to group A, once again, the first row is yes, no, yes, no for columns. So how I can maybe simply describe these people uh, what is uh, uh, quite uh, characteristics uh, for the majority of group A, which response pattern uh, is uh, the major response pattern for group A. Agree or disagree for first uh, uh, and the second item? So once again, yes, no, yes, no. So what is the major response style here for group A? So according to my opinion here, most people say yes to the first item and most people say yes to the second item. As you can see here, uh, 110 and 11, 110 and 11. So approximately 90% uh, are saying yes for the first item and uh, 10 for uh, uh, saying no and the same style here. So uh, similar situation here uh, for group B. Once again, what is uh, the major uh, response pattern here uh, for responding for the first item and responding for the second item? Can somebody help me? It's no. Yeah, mostly these people are saying no. So approximately only one tenth is saying yes here, seven from 77. And uh, mostly they are saying yes for the first item. For the second item, once again, uh, only 11 from 77 uh, saying yes and 66. Uh, uh, so once again, approximately uh, uh, 10 uh, versus 90 uh, are saying no. So uh, that's a response pattern. So the difference between group A and group B would be that these are people who are responding yes, yes, and uh, this group V would be people who are responding no, no. 
by these so-called once again uh, conditional probabilities so it means responding yes or no uh, yes or no if i'm a member of group a or group b uh, would be once again these parameters in latent class analysis and uh, as uh, we would like also uh, to perform some uh, computations in M plus, uh, so we would uh, try to take uh, this example. So it means this data, once again, here we would have uh, this origin data and uh, we would take this data into M plus package and uh, we would compute uh, results and we expect that M plus would be so clever to discover two groups such as group A, group B, the sizes should be approximately 60 to 40. And uh, response patterns should be for bigger group, yes, yes. For small group, no, no, uh, as uh, the major pattern. So uh, let's try uh, whether it works. Uh, uh, and now uh, we would uh, start M plus uh, and uh, we would be using a data file, uh, which is called motivation, DAT. And uh, we would need an input file, which is called motivation input file extension INP. So first of all, we would need to start uh, M plus uh, and uh, we would need to open uh, motivation input file INP uh, extension. So first of all, I would need to find M plus uh, uh, demo on my uh, computer. So I hope uh, I have uh, installed. Uh, so here it is. So I would open M plus demo. So now it should be open. And uh, if I uh, open uh, once again uh, the file which is called motivation uh, input file INP extension, so I would need to find it. So here it is. So uh, I can uh, get uh, uh, current uh, comments. I wouldn't discuss uh, these comments for this first example, uh, as uh, first of all, I would like uh, uh, to uh, you understand uh, basic outputs in M plus. Uh, so please only take it as it is, only be sure uh, that uh, your input file, so it means uh, file with the extension INP, uh, is in the same folder as uh, uh, the file motivation DAT, which is data file, only for you to recognize uh, 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 the pattern of this data. So I would open this data. Uh, oh, sorry, that's not motivation, uh, uh, but uh, motivation, uh, I and D, uh, DAT, this is uh, the data file we are using. And here we have uh, uh, these combinations of yes, yes, uh, yes, no, uh, no, no, and no, yes, uh, patterns. Uh, so these uh, one, 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 two, two, one, and uh, one, two uh, combinations. Uh, and here we have also some ID uh, for individual response pattern. Uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, data uh, we have here. Uh, so uh, if we run this uh, command, uh, so you can click uh, onto Control and A and click uh, into Run or Control plus R. Uh, so you would run M plus uh, and you would get results. I hope so. So after some time uh, of uh, computation, as uh, latent class analysis is uh, quite uh, computation intensive technique, uh, I would get some results. So I would open Microsoft Excel here uh, and maybe I would copy some basic results uh, from this output uh, uh, to make it bigger uh, for you uh, to have an option to read it. So I would uh, skip uh, many, many outputs, uh, uh, but I would only uh, uh, take uh, some basic outputs that we would need uh, for the first inside. So first of all, uh, here we have uh, the section uh, which is uh, devoted uh, to latent class sizes. 
once again, if I go back uh, to our equation, so these probabilities, usually in percentages, uh, will be presented here. So this section is called in final class counts and proportions uh, based on estimated model and then based on posterior probabilities. These two should be very close to each other, uh, but I would take uh, the first uh, from my model and I would copy it uh, to Microsoft Excel and make it bigger uh, for you to have an option to uh, read it. So here we have uh, uh, the information that uh, I asked for two latent classes and sizes of these latent classes are approximately 82 and 117 and the proportions are uh, 41 to 59. If you check these results 116 versus 82 and our original results in Microsoft Excel uh, environment. Uh, so once again, we have it here, 121 and 77. So we are very, very close. So it means that uh, this, once again to Microsoft Excel, uh, this class, which is called number one, would be group B here. So these would be those people who were saying no, no, mostly. And this latent class two, which is bigger, would be this group A. Maybe that in your computation, you have a reversed results. So it means the first class is bigger and the second is more. It could happen. Uh, M plus, of course, couldn't recognize that we would like to have bigger first group and small second group. Uh, so it could be a reverse, but your result should be the same or very similar to mine. So it means one bigger group, approximately 60%, and one small group, uh, uh, 40%. Am I correct? Can you see similar or the same results on your computers? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, thanks a lot uh, for kind feedback. So that's the first insight. So we know that nearly ideally, we have divided my data into two groups. One is bigger and one is small. And this is nearly the same style as we have it here, uh, that this uh, division was made artificially by me as I prepared originally two groups. And then I mix these groups and compute it uh, uh, together uh, final results. Uh, so I was uh, slightly cheating uh, on you, uh, I must say. Okay, so that's the first insight of sizes. And now we would go into the interpretation of these latent classes. So we must go down uh, in M plus outputs. And if I go down, uh, I must find a table uh, which would be called as results in probability scale. Uh, as uh, original results uh, are in logit scales, uh, and usually, as we know from previous discussion about logistic regression, logits are not uh, very friendly to understanding. Uh, so I would go into results in probability scale. And I would once again copy uh, this part of the output. So here we would have uh, this output uh, for probability scale. Here it is. And as you can uh, uh, once again uh, go back to our previous example. So we know that this group B, smaller one, is called for us as latent class one. So once again, we are expecting that this group B for us, class one, would be mostly those people who are saying no, no. So let's go to this part of uh, uh, this uh, discussion. Uh, so here we have a first latent class and we can recognize that probability answering yes is 0.13. And probability of saying no is 0 0.87. So mostly they are saying no for the first item. And also for the second item, the pattern style is similar. So I can very simply interpret that this first latent class are those who are saying no, no, mostly. So once again, this is our previous group B. I can go back 
to the output for latent class two. And uh, you can see it here. These are uh, response patterns for item one. So it means originally it was this row variable and then item two column variable. So uh, if you can see these response patterns, so uh, can I conclude uh, that uh, this latent class two are people that are uh, agreeing or disagreeing with two items? Do these people in latent class mostly agree or disagree with item one, item two? So can you see any? Mostly disagree. Mostly agree? M mostly disagree. Disagree? I can see here category one, which is agreement, and category one, which is agreement. And this is majority. 1.917, 1.933. And here I have only a uh, uh, very, very small amount of people, uh, slightly less uh, than 10%, and here only uh, approximately seven. So mostly agree. So these are, once again, conditional probabilities that can help me to understand and to interpret the meaning of latent classes. So once again, if I conclude here, I have one small latent class of those people who are saying mostly no, no, and I have a bigger uh, latent class of those people who are mostly saying yes, yes. And of course, now it would be uh, good to add some substantive interpretation uh, to find what were items behind, uh, but we would skip this step for this first insight. So this was very simple motivation example. I have one more example uh, uh, prepared for you in the presentation. Uh, this is maybe the most famous uh, latent class analysis uh, that was uh, ever published. Uh, so I would make it uh, slightly bigger, uh, it's too much. Uh, uh, so here we have uh, results uh, from uh, uh, general social survey. Uh, this is well known uh, survey of American population, uh, which is uh, performed every year uh, in the US. And here we have the table, uh, which is on the first row, uh, offering uh, class or unconditional probability. So here we have the proportions of individual classes. Here we have class one, uh, class two, sorry for this typo, I would uh, change it, and class three. And if I can see 0 0.62, 0 0.2, and 0 uh, 0.18, I can conclude that the first class is the biggest one, nearly one third, uh, two thirds uh, of uh, uh, all people are included in this uh, first class. And uh, the next two classes are uh, of the same size, approximately one fifth of people are here and here. And then I can read these conditional probabilities. So for example, for this, uh, uh, yellow question. Uh, this was question whether the survey purpose are good or not. And uh, three options uh, were offered to respondents. Purpose is always good. Uh, uh, it depends and purpose of the survey is always bad. Uh, so uh, approximately 89% uh, responded good for this first pattern, uh, first class. 5% uh, uh, said it depends and uh, nearly the same size responded purpose of the survey is always bad. For precision, whether uh, surveys are precise or not, response patterns 60 versus 40. And for understanding, uh, so it means here, uh, not respondent, but interviewer uh, uh, responded uh, whether uh, he or she understand or not, so it seems that all people in this first class uh, understood uh, the survey. And last one, once again, information from interviewer was whether he or she was interested during the interview or not. And you can see that mostly these people were interested. And my question to all of you, and uh, you could help me is, if I can see these patterns, uh, so it means uh, people who are mostly saying that purpose of the survey is good, uh, that the precision uh, is maybe in survey usually 
uh, offered uh, uh, these people understand uh, to survey and are quite interested in the survey what could be the label, the name for this latent class, which is very big uh, uh, in uh, general social survey 1982. So uh, there is majority of these people in the US population. So what could be the label for this latent class? This is nearly the same style as uh, we try to find the names for factors uh, behind factor analysis. So we need to interpret these classes. We need to assign some names, labels. So please help me. How we would call these respondents? It would be something like supporters. Supporters, it could be some other possible names. Then I can give you the name uh, which was uh, uh, assigned by original uh, researchers. So some idea. So uh, if I remember well, so American uh, researchers uh, here uh, called uh, these uh, first class as ideal respondents. Okay. So uh, now I would ask you if you could go to this second class. Once again, it is approximately one fifth of the people. So they are mostly saying purpose is good. They are mostly believing the precision. According to interviewers, they do not understand at all. And uh, they are quite interested. What could be the name for the second latent class? some idea and maybe you can also try to read uh, the third column here so people mostly saying purpose is bad people mostly saying uh, it's not precise they understand mostly and uh, they are quite interested so what could be the names for class two and class three once again here we call these people as supporters or ideal respondents, so what could be the name for class two and class three? Some idea? Like class three might be something like detractors and class two might be something like um, uncertain, average, or something in the middle. <laughs> okay, uh, if I remember well, uh, uh, so this class two uh, was coined by original researchers as believers, as uh, they believe in the survey, but they don't understand at all. Uh, that was uh, the main idea behind. And uh, I must admit that I don't remember original name for the latent class three. But uh, as we can see these results, uh, so these uh, probabilities, uh, which uh, we use uh, for uh, description of latent class sizes uh, were uh, these values uh, from M plus uh, package. So these latent class uh, probabilities, so these are these uh, latent class sizes. And here, these uh, latent class uh, condition probabilities uh, are uh, these values uh, from this table. Yeah, sorry. Okay, some question? Okay, so, uh, so these are basic results. We should read, once again, by these figures, we can recognize uh, uh, the size of the classes, and here we can recognize what is the meaning of the classes. So we need to interpret the meaning uh, and assign some names to classes. So here we are, and now I would go uh, very quickly. Uh, so I would only mention that there are two types of latent class analysis. This is the same style as uh, for factor analysis. There is exploratory version and confirmatory version. We wouldn't go into confirmatory latent class analysis in spite of the fact that MPLUS uh, can uh, compute a lot uh, from this, and we would perform only very easy exploratory latent class analysis. And the main goal of uh, exploratory LCA is that you go through different solutions for two, three, four, five, et cetera, latent classes, and you try to find the best solution for your data. 
So now I would go quickly uh, through the computational stuff. Uh, so uh, you expect that your data include more nominal and ordinal variables. Uh, for our example, we would get six variables uh, advanced and you assume that these variables are related and there is some hidden structure behind my data. Uh, now I would go very quickly through some technical detail. So estimation of LCA is performed usually by maximum likelihood. So this is the same technique as uh, we were performing in uh, logistic regression. Also, this is a uh, quite classical technique uh, for structural equation modeling. And if you like to compute uh, uh, LCA, it is quite complicated uh, as you need as the first uh, input uh, estimation of parameters. So it means before you start to compute anything, you need to assign some probabilities of latent class sizes and also some probabilities of response patterns. So these condition probabilities. Uh, uh, I would say uh, that we are quite happy that current software packages uh, are trying uh, to give you these estimates uh, usually by uh, generating of random values. So for example, N plus would offer uh, these random values. But the problem is that uh, in LCA, it can happen uh, that uh, computation, which is uh, based on some iterations, so on some steps, could finish uh, on the result, which is not the best. Uh, we call this uh, problem as local minimum problem. And that's why it is quite often uh, in statistical packages for LCA to give starting values, not only once, but many times and compare results. Recommendation, uh, which you can find in the literature uh, for LCA is usually that you should start at least 50 times uh, for computation of real life data examples. Uh, and plus default, if I remember well, is 20. And uh, for a small amount of variables, such as uh, we would have only uh, six variables, it is still usually enough. I will give you some insight how we can check results. And here you have uh, some equations uh, from a Mac Kachon textbook. So here it is how it works. So first of all, you would give or computer will give you some starting values. So uh, these values are the first estimation. And by these values, you could compute so these joint probabilities. This is equation for three variables called A, B, and C. So you would multiply all these probabilities and you would make this joint probability. Then you would sum up all these probabilities by individual latent classes, that's the next equation. And then you would be estimating uh, individual probabilities by this equation. And uh, then you would be estimating probabilities of uh, latent classes, these unconditional probabilities and conditional probabilities. So this is the first step. And then the next step is that you would compare these results computed in the first iteration, this original once again generated randomly values. If these values are close to each other, the uh, computer would stop and would say, I have your final results. It would uh, never come say, in uh, real life uh, situations. So the next step would take these estimations from the first step as input here. And once again, go through the next cycle. And once again, compare these results to results from the previous step. And if these results are close to each other, uh, the algorithm is stopping and gives you results. So that's how it works. And uh, classical LCA outputs are especially these probabilities we have covered. Uh, there are also some tests uh, such as chi-square test or likelihood ratio test. And there are also AICs or BICs uh, for these models. We wouldn't cover these, uh, but all these are present uh, and you can read more about it uh, in the literature. And now uh, we would uh, try uh, to uh, take a real life example and uh, we would take exploratory latent class analysis for six items uh, uh, which are describing uh, whether kids uh, uh, 
<coughs> like or dislike reading. So first of all, uh, I would uh, open uh, M plus. Uh, uh, so I would uh, take uh, only uh, uh, this uh, new file. So I would uh, open uh, uh, first input, uh, which is called classes uh, one uh, I and P. And I would only briefly uh, describe uh, uh, this uh, data file and also individual variables. So data file which is behind is reading DAT and variables we would uh, be discussing are called uh, must and the original statement was I must read. Uh, the next item was about that if I read some book, I'm talking about this book uh, with other kids. Uh, the next one, which is called present, is that I like uh, to get books as present. Uh, uh, reading is boring is the next statement. I would read more. The next one and the last one is I enjoy reading. Before we start to discuss uh, uh, results, uh, I would like briefly to discuss about expectation of results of this latent class analysis. So these are six statements about reading of books. Uh, uh, these data, if I remember well, uh, were data for kids in the first class uh, in the Czech Republic. Uh, so here we have uh, data from the survey, which is called PIRLS. Uh, so it is about reading literacy. Uh, and uh, if you uh, try to imagine uh, uh, kids in their uh, first grade of elementary school, what could be different latent classes? What could be different groups of kids uh, according to their likes and dislike uh, to books and reading? What's your expectation? How many groups could be and what could be these groups like? So some expectations. So maybe that all kids uh, would like reading and there will be only one class. Could you expect something like this or uh, would you expect more classes? I maybe expect like four classes uh, depending on the if they whether like or not reading and whether they do like sharing uh, they 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 liking. So like one class will be uh, they like and share another class will be they like but they don't share they uh, enjoy from the books and this third and fourth will be the same but uh, with the negative attitude to books maybe. okay okay so uh, i would start uh, with uh, the first uh, insight uh, into this data uh, and i would uh, first of all briefly uh, make comments uh, uh, to this uh, syntax. So in N plus, first of all, you must declare data file. So data file is called reading DAT. And uh, if it is present in the same folder as we have it here, so that's not necessary uh, to define the pass. Uh, so it means uh, uh, the disk and folder. Then the set of variable must be assigned. So first one is called ID, then must talk, present, boring, more, and enjoy. Uh, then there are also variables must one talk one, uh, as there are two versions here. Uh, one is binary and one is uh, variables with uh, more categories. Uh, uh, there are also some more variables. Uh, if you like uh, to save data, uh, we wouldn't uh, utilize this option. Uh, you must uh, uh, assign so-called auxiliary uh, variable. So ID is uh, here assigned as auxiliary variable. Then exclusion of missing values. And then uh, as we have also some weighting variable. So here is the phrase that data will be weighted by W. Use variables are must one, talk one, present one, boring, more, and enjoy. So these are variables that are only binary, original must, talk, present, etc. are with four categories. If you like, you can perform alone at home also uh, the same analysis uh, with four categories. And first of all, I would like to take uh, latent class with one class only. That's why I'm typing classes is equal uh, to C uh, and uh, in brackets only one class will be uh, prepared and I must define all variables 
which I will utilize in latent class analysis as categorical. So all of these are uh, assigned as categorical. And for latent class analysis, the next option is also uh, a must you must uh, type into analysis section that type is mixture. Latent class analysis is one of techniques that are called uh, mixture uh, statistical techniques. And if I like to see also some outputs uh, in plots, uh, I must also assign section for plots, but these plots are not very nice. And once again, we wouldn't use uh, the last option, but there is also a possibility to save data. So it means uh, save latent class assignment in data. So that's why we have here a section for saving data. So that's only a brief insight into this uh, latent class uh, input file. And now I can run this uh, first uh, input file for one latent class and the meaning why I'm performing such an operation is that I'm not, of course, expecting there is only one latent class, but I would like to take results for this latent class only one, and I would like to compare these results with two, three, four, and maybe more latent classes, and to see uh, whether next models are better. So I would take this first uh, model as something like benchmark for comparison. So I would run this first model. So it would take maybe some seconds uh, to compute uh, uh, iterations in latent class analysis. Uh, so maybe that your computer is faster than mine. So I'm still waiting, but I hope uh, it would uh, uh, go quite quickly. Uh, this data file is quite big, uh, so uh, maybe uh, it can be a uh, slight slow, but still in some seconds uh, you should find result. So. For this first insight, uh, you can only find some descriptive statistics. So you can find that, uh, uh, for example, uh, if you uh, describe individual variables, category one is no and category two is yes here. So uh, in, if you take uh, the first grade, so mostly uh, kids are not saying I must read, mostly they are saying uh, no. Uh, for talk, uh, they mostly saying yes, uh, I talk about books, uh, I like presents, uh, 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 books are boring, once again, mostly disagreement. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I would like to read more. Once again, two thirds of kids uh, would like to read more and most kids, approximately 80% enjoy reading. So it seems probable that if we would take uh, two classes, there would be more kids uh, enjoying uh, books and uh, only small group uh, would dislike uh, reading. And I would only uh, save information for information criteria so I would take uh, this output. So here it is. And uh, I would uh, save this information only for comparison with other models. So that's enough uh, for this first insight. So now uh, I can uh, go uh, to preparation of two classes solution. So I would uh, open uh, two classes solution. So I would uh, take the five classes to input file. And if you open uh, this uh, uh, input file for two classes, the only difference is on the row, which is called classes. And here we have that we would ask for two classes. So if I go back here, so here I would type instead of classes is equal to C1, classes is equal to C2. So I would get two classes. If I would divide my data into two classes, uh, what's your expectation? What will be these two classes according to reading and their likes and dislikes? So I expect that I would get kids, those uh, uh, who like, uh, who, who <laughs> those who like uh, uh, reading and those who dislike. Uh, usually if you take only two classes, they are quite opposite to each other. So I would run this solution. And first of all, uh, before I start uh, to interpret results, uh, I would maybe compare this solution to the previous one. Uh, so M plus is uh, computing for me. It would take a uh, longer time uh, to compute two classes. Uh, uh, and uh, if I'm uh, 
correctly uh, performed uh, the computation. So uh, I can go down. And first of all, I would compare previous results uh, with current results uh, by AIC and BIC. So I would go once again to the previous results. Here we have a result for one class only and for two classes. If you remember well, we discussed about AIC and BIC, and we discussed uh, that uh, the version of AIC and BIC comparison is the lower, the better. So if you compare AICs and BICs, and once again, at least uh, for BIC, you can uh, say that if it is at least uh, uh, 10 points smaller, it is better model. So my question is whether the model with two classes is better than the model with one class only. It is better. Okay, so definitely much better are these models. Okay, so I would go down and uh, I would read briefly uh, some results. So here we have the sizes of latent classes. So here we have bigger class, approximately uh, three quarters, and small class, approximately one quarter of all kids. And now we would like to understand the meaning. So I would go down once again to model results in probability scale. So here it is. And maybe for simplicity, uh, I would uh, copy uh, for the first inside only uh, first latent class. So here it is. And we can read results. Uh, so once again, uh, the first class is the bigger one and the uh, small class is uh, uh, the uh, second one. And if I can uh, once again uh, repeat the information category one is no, uh, NTS. So this first class, once again, which is bigger, three quarters uh, of all kids. So they are mostly saying, I must treat no. I like to talk about books mostly yes. I am uh, also saying I like uh, to uh, get book as a present. Reading is boring. No, mostly I would like uh, to read more and they are definitely enjoying most of these. So what could be the interpretation for this first latent class? How I would call this first latent class? Do these uh, kids like reading or dislike reading? I guess it's like. Okay, so they are, I would call it likers. And now I would copy briefly latent class two. And we would go quickly through results. So here we have latent class two. So mostly they are responding, I must read. Mostly they are responding, no, I don't like to talk about books, about present, one half is uh, uh, <coughs> quite uh, 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 saying yes, it could be present, one half is against. Boring, nearly three quarters are saying it's boring to read. I wouldn't definitely read more three quarters and I'm not enjoying. So I would call this second class. What could be the name? Disliker. Yeah, so I would call it dislikers. Uh, one general command, if you are performing only two class solution, you would every time uh, get uh, quite totally opposite classes. And if you would get more and more classes, uh, you would get, uh, uh, of course, some uh, classes that are somewhere between these two opposite types. So uh, that's general rule for latent classes. So uh, these were uh, two classes and I would also perform three classes solution. So I would go once again back into M plus and I would ask for three classes. So classes three, I and P. The only uh, change uh, in input file is that I'm asking for three classes. So if I go back once again, maybe I will run it uh, uh, for a minute. Uh, and if I go back uh, into uh, this input file, so here I would type only classes is equal to C and uh, uh, type three. So I would be performing three classes. 
So M plus is preparing results uh, for me currently. So I would wait. And uh, if I'm finished, uh, so it seems it is correctly computed, I can go once again down. So first of all, I would check uh, information criteria. So once again here, and I would copy once again results uh, to the next columns. So here it is. Maybe I can make slightly small this column uh, to see all these results. And here you can uh, compare AIC and BIC for three classes, two classes, or one class only. So my first question is whether the solution for three classes according to AIC or BIC is better than a solution for two classes. It is better. Yeah, yeah, as these values are once again smaller and uh, still the difference is approximately maybe 100 points. So it is still much better. So now we are prepared to read results. So I would once again go down and I would once again copy sizes of individual classes. So here it is. And I can see that I have three classes as I expected. So one is quite big, approximately uh, two thirds, and then uh, two quite small classes, approximately one fifth uh, and approximately 16 uh, percentages. So I can expect before I start to read uh, uh, individual results that this biggest class would be a big amount of these uh, likers. One of these classes would be this likers, and maybe there would be some group which is somewhere between. So maybe I wouldn't copy uh, the information for the first class, I would only read it uh, from M plus output. So here it is. And uh, if you read results for latent class one in probability scale, so you can find that uh, they uh, do not agree that uh, I must read, they do not agree uh, that uh, it is boring, and uh, they agree with talking about books, present uh, uh, about reading more, and about enjoying. So these are likers, once again. So we would read only results for latent class two and latent class three to understand and interpret results. So I would get these results here only. So it would be latent class two, and let's start to read these results. So I would go down and we can start. So they mostly agree they must read. Uh, they uh, wouldn't like to talk. Uh, maybe they would like to have present. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, they uh, do not agree. Uh, they must read. Uh, uh, they uh, usually wouldn't like uh, to talk. They would like to take book as present. They uh, do not agree that it is boring. They are quite divided uh, according uh, whether uh, it would be good uh, to uh, get more. And they are quite enjoying uh, reading books. What could be the interpretation for this latent class? Once again, they are not quite against the reading, uh, but they don't like uh, to talk about books with others. They are enjoying and they would like to get book as a present. What could be the interpretation for this latent class? Is the class somewhere in the middle? Once again, approximately 16% of all kids are here in the Czech Republic. What could be the interpretation? Some ideas, some proposals. Um, these kids are shy to talk about it or they are introvert? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would call these books, uh, uh, I would call uh, these kids, sorry for that, uh, uh, such as uh, enjoy reading alone. Yeah? So uh, uh, enjoy alone uh, or something like this. And now let's only check uh, whether the Next, uh, last one, latent class, would be those who don't like uh, reading at all. So I would copy once again these outputs. So here we have latent class three. As you can see, 
they say mostly I must read. They say mostly it is boring. They mostly say, no, I wouldn't talk about books. Uh, uh, the present is still uh, quite divided about this opinion. Uh, I wouldn't read more uh, and I wouldn't enjoy reading books. So once again, I would call uh, these as dislikers or strict dislikers. Okay, so uh, you could uh, also perform uh, other solutions. Uh, you have also prepared uh, uh, an input uh, as well as for output file uh, for classes. So you can uh, go through this solution alone. Uh, I wouldn't be performing because we are currently out of time. So I would only uh, briefly conclude about the software options uh, for latent class analysis. So, uh, if you would like uh, to use uh, latent class analysis uh, computations, so of course uh, you can use M plus. Uh, uh, M plus demo can handle up to six uh, variables, uh, so it is quite good. Uh, uh, but uh, current options are, of course, much wider. Uh, you can use uh, uh, Freeware R. In R, uh, according to my opinion, the best package uh, which is available for latent class analysis is POLCA, PO small letters and LCA big letters. Uh, uh, the best uh, package uh, for latent class analysis currently on the market, uh, so it means it is commercial, is latent gold. And uh, if you are a fan of SPSS, uh, you can also run LCA in SPSS uh, in last uh, six versions, it is possible, uh, but you must first of all install uh, R uh, and uh, R extension for SPSS. Uh, so it means you would be running SPSS, uh, uh, SPSS would be running R, and once again, back uh, in SPSS, you would get results from R. Uh, also from other packages which are commercial, uh, there are edit uh, uh, procedures in SAS for latent class analysis. And as far as I know, there is also procedure for latent class analysis in Stata. So that's about options uh, for computations of LCA currently. So uh, that's uh, the end uh, for today. Uh, first introduction.